Let's get started. Good morning, good morning, everybody. I'm good Melinda Grimaldi, and um, thank you for joining us. This is Damage Control. Damage Control is a series that Anthony and I started kind of before all this coronavirus stuff started. Um, and we were going to do it biweekly or, or monthly to kind of come on and, uh, and share some tips and tricks and strategies for everyone in the real estate industry. Uh, but it's turned into something different now because we all are self-quarantining ourselves and not getting into uh, in groups with a lot of people. We've decided to, uh, to do this on the weekly. And this week, it's a special edition because we have two of our lovely, lovely uh, favorite girls here, um, Bethany and Megan. But let's, let me have Anthony introduce himself. And then, Anthony, you can um, uh, uh, introduce ladies. All right. My name is Anthony Angelillo, folks. Been doing this business now for now 17 years, and um, I've never seen what's going on in the market today. It's insane. Uh, image control is something that Melinda and I thought of, I'd say, almost, what, Melinda, maybe a year ago? Six months ago? When we met. It feels like a year ago. Um, and every time we did an event, we hosted an event, and we would get thousands of you know DMs and hundreds of DMs and people coming at us saying you know what what do we do in this problem in this scenario in that scenario, and we collaborated and we said you know what we should come up with an episode of damage control like putting out fires, and you know problem solving the situations that go on in our in our business, uh, whether it be the lending side or the real estate side the title side. Um, insurance. It's uh, it's just about taking the problem, solving it, and sharing it with the world, and and really strategizing and saying, look, this is how we did it. This is how we got through that obstacle, uh, and that's what this episode's about. Uh, and I am so thankful to have special guests on here, like Megan and Bethany. Uh, these women are amazing with Instagram, and they're amazing marketers, and they're very very good at what they do. So um, I definitely am excited today because I want to go in depth of what we're going to learn and also talk about, um, you know, the rates and how we're looking there and how we're going to focus on a positive outlook uh, and not all this negative propaganda on Instagram about the coronavirus, how we're going to overcome this stuff and achieve our goals and try to stay positive. Right, Melinda? Yes. So let's go into it. Let's introduce the girls. Bethany. Bethany, my favorite. Well, I'm Bethany Martinez. I've been practicing real estate for seven years. I'm with Related ISG, and I have the pleasure of working with Melinda and Megan on a daily basis. And just to touch on what you said, I think it's so important that we're able to <clears throat> that we're able to share the things that we go through because we actually talk about this stuff all day long in our business. We call each other daily to talk about the struggles. We get advice from each other and we usually work everything out, but it's nice to actually get this on video and share it with everybody else because now is the time to do so, you know? So I think it's so fitting that we take our daily conversations and we make them public so that we can help everybody grow in this time. And plus now people actually have the time. They're taking a moment and they're sitting at home and they're able to get on these webinars so anything we can do to collaborate and help each other, I'm all for always. Awesome. Megan. Megan. Hi guys, it's Megan Propes with Compass. Um, I'm actually in Broward County, um, working from home like many of you. And um, I've been in the industry for 10 years. I actually started, you know, 2008 when everyone, it was a doom and gloom and we made it through, you know, so this is definitely unprecedented times, but I appreciate coming together on platforms like this. It's been so heartwarming being able to connect with my past clients, my colleagues, industry professionals. This is a, definitely a time for us to just come together through technology and really just make a plan to get through it. It's changing day by day. So thank you guys for putting this on and looking forward to this next hour together. Yes. All right. So I will be the ringmaster in a sense, um, but definitely it's something, these last few weeks have been something that I have never experienced um, in this way. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, just share how, how your daily life, other than, you know, obviously not going out and about as much as we used to, but how has, how has business changed for you in the last few weeks? <laughs> Anthony, why don't you start? Because it's probably the most chaotic for you. 
Um, I, I could talk an hour about this. Um, Don't, you have one minute. <laughs> how has it changed? All right, so, so for me, I'm, I'm trying to stay positive with, with the mayhem that's going on, but more importantly, um, the rates for me are really up and down. And so how do, I, how do I explain that to a client when I'm on the phone with that client and then 10 minutes later, there's a price in the alert saying, please, you know, price our, our lock or, or lock in our loan. The pricing is going to deteriorate. Um, it's, it's really chaotic. And the way I'm staying positive is just trying to collaborate with our, our, my influencers and my mentors, but most importantly, my team, uh, and stay positive in these scenarios and problem solve uh, certain objections that we're having. Uh, what we're doing is a little bit different and um, it's, it's using systems to automate the back end, which would be more of operations to bring in those people because uh, there's a line right now uh, that want to refi. Uh, and so we're taking those, those people and, and those consumers and taking the information and basically uh, getting all that information ready so when rates do get better and you know obviously they will, then we're going to lock in that individual. So that's what we're doing over here. It's a little bit different. So you think you have a system and one minute it's such a good systematic approach and you're talking to someone who I'm so anal when it comes to systems and staying on track and having the same groundhog day for me because I like that. That's what makes me, you know, um, who I am today, right? So having this voluntary, you know, market going up and down, up and down and not knowing what to anticipate, that's what's you know, throwing a, a wrench into everything and uh, to navigate those uncharted waters. That's something that um, we should definitely talk about as well. So, but your phones have not stopped ringing. Nonstop. I, it, I mean, nonstop, literally. I, yesterday we had <laughs> seven, no, the day before that we had 17 locks. Um, and then yesterday we had six people literally call in from start to finish. We locked them and submitted them. Uh, a lot of purchase business as well. We have three purchases coming in right now. Uh, so all in all, we've had probably 20 something deals that uh, literally a tidal wave of business have, has come into us and our operations is at a standstill right now. Uh, but they're catching up. Uh, Adam, Yannette, Sarah, and Brian, they're all working OT. Uh, and I, you know, I see Brian literally and Adam working until 10 p.m. at night, Yannette as well. Uh, granted, most of them working from home. Uh, but yeah, there's an influx of business, Melinda. You know, I'm slacking you through our community. Uh, and uh, we're, we're doing a lot of business right now, which is a blessing. But it's also, you know, um, definitely got to cherish the business you have right now and ask for referrals and uh, think of ways to reciprocate back to it's not just about me. Cool. What about you, Bethany? How's your last couple weeks been? Oh, I mean, business is still going as usual and I have five listings coming to the market. So, you know, there's a lot of conversations with sellers that are talking about what's the game plan, what are our, our procedures. So it's just doing that, assuring them that we're going to take care of them in these times of needs, educating them. And it's crazy as it sounds, like there's some people that still don't really know the severity of what's going on. Maybe they don't have Instagram and maybe they don't watch the news, <laughs> which is beyond me sometimes, right? Because that's how most of us find out our news these days. But um, <laughs> they're still like a little bit clueless. And I'm getting these calls and for show requests. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm telling people, okay, absolutely show with precaution. Verify with the building. See if they'll let you. Because a lot of buildings are stopping realtors from showing. So there's just so many different levels dealing with, you know, the seller client and the buyer client and putting procedures together and a checklist and making sure that you're assuring them that we're still working. You know, we keep seeing all these memes about real estate doesn't close. And unfortunately, like, fortunately, it really doesn't. Someone still needs to move. Yeah. My rentals, like the few clients that I had that were rentals that were on the fence about things are like, I need one now. And we closed like five this week because of that. So it's a crazy sense of urgency that people are having. You know, people are maybe being a little more lenient on their pricing or a little more flexible when it comes to terms, just because they say we need to lock things up right now because we don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to say before it gets worse. Cause I'm just hoping that we're being so aware as a community that we're stopping things from actually getting worse yeah. and we're yeah. working together to take those precautions. And hopefully we can 
you know, we can make it out better, stronger, because I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like, what can I, what books can I read? You yeah. know, I, Megan and I started a detox this week because we were just like, well, if we're gonna be <laughs> whatever's in our fridge, like, let's give ourselves a challenge. Let's get clean. Let's start. Did you detox. do your calls? <laughs> I did my yes, calls. I yes, sent out videos. Did. We have a call challenge. I, I still have a ton of more calls to do, <laughs> but it's really pushing us to use all of our hidden talents and things to come together. <laughs> and and awesome. what, what can we create? So awesome. What about you, Megan? What's been cooking for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been busy, just as you guys mentioned. I mean, my phone has rang five times from clients <laughs> since we've been on the line. Um, someone you know it's really all about communication these past two weeks uh your communication skills need to be like super honed in and tuned in 24 7 agent status um uh, our marketing our regional marketing director sent us an email that said you know you guys the agent is a five letter word word that is not big enough to suit you you are analysts therapists strategists entrepreneurs ceos and visionaries and i think right now we're honing in on the therapist uh, yeah. term where, you know, people are very nervous. Uh, they're very uneasy. I'm taking an approach though, by using my technology to connect with people. And it's like I mentioned before, my relationships are very strong right now. We're taking it case by case. So I have 10 listings right now. We have 10 that are coming up, but it's really case by case in the neighborhood, what's happening with the market being in tune. So I would say it's all about technology. Thankfully, I've embraced technology and my company is a technology company. So I think this really is going to push everyone to embrace and like get to that next level, like doing things like we're doing right now. So awesome. I would say communication for sure. So you guys all pull up some really good points. I'll give you a little bit of my experience and then we're going to, I'm going to ask you guys to follow up on some of those things. So personally, I haven't had a busier month in these last two weeks has it have been insane. The amount of new files that we've opened thus far are, it, it's just, it, it's almost surreal to me because I'm like afraid sometimes of what can possibly turn out from all this. But then again, like it's been a killer month. So um, I, we're, 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 we're working really hard to make sure everything stays on track. Um, and my team, like we're very careful. We're wiping down closing tables before uh, wearing gloves at closing because we need to stay healthy to close all the all your deals right so we need yeah. to make sure that you know after we're still at the office we're working from the office because we have closings every day now so we're just making sure that after the office we all go home we're very careful with our health we're very, we, yesterday I bleached the whole office one more time light switches handles computers everything got wiped down um, and we're very careful when we come in, we wash our hands right away. We're, we're, we're using paper to turn that knobs and everything just in an abundance of caution, because we need to make sure that we are available for your closings because that's another reason why something could stop, right? If your closing agent is fully shut down and everyone's sick, that's not going to be a, a good thing. So we're, we're being very careful with that. Um, then, so we're super busy. I've been up super early, up super late, like working on files, uh, keeping my mindset in check. Um, I, I, I was telling Anthony, I said, if I give you one more doomsday link or article, tell me to, you know, to shut my mouth. And <laughs> because sometimes like I'm in a good, I'm like on a good thing and all of a sudden I'll see something and I'll just throw me off the rails. And I'm really trying so to many people have said that about social distancing yeah. from your cell phone so that you're yes. not just feeding yes. your brain all of these horrible articles. Yeah. And so um, that's definitely something that, you know, I'm trying to focus on and I'm not really watching the news um, or anything like that. That's uh, the, the newest layer for me has been, um, my son's now not in school. I'm lucky enough to have a nanny, but he needs to have lessons and things. And this is not like summer vacation. There's has to be some structure. So today we like worked with a structure and how we're going to plan the day. And every day now I'm going to go home for lunch and teach him his lesson for the day. Cause really only I'm able to do that for him. Um, right now. So that is, and the, the teacher is sending videos and, and worksheets and things for us to do virtually. And he's in pre-K four. How, how, how impressed are you with the educational system? How they've been able to, there's some that have been switching so quickly. So yeah. Online. And I think parents are blown away that they're young. I've been seeing so many parents talk about their four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old kids 
doing online classes, yep. raising hey, their hands to go to the long. bathroom. Like, it's crazy what your kid, I swear a realtor was saying how she was so, Vanessa Hernandez, I don't know if you guys know her. She says, it freaked me out when I watched my kid raise his hand at his desk at home wow. and asked the teacher if he could go to the bathroom. And he's wow. five. He's yeah. creating a new era after this. You know, That's yeah. sure. this arc is going to be. Yeah, I know. It's definitely something. So that's, it's very interesting. It's, it's definitely, uh, we need to stay flexible in these times to be able to adjust to what's happening. Um, and definitely checking in on everybody and seeing how, like today I'm going to send a video to all my clients, their contract, you know, ensuring them what's cooking uh, and that everything's, we're in good shape. So, um, I, before we move on to the marketing side of things, I want Anthony very briefly and in simple, simple terms, please explain the rates to everybody because there's a lot of mixed messages out there online with people saying, oh, rates are low. You have to finance and refinance now. The Fed's just cut again, 0%. That really doesn't correlate to what's happening <laughs> in the business. So can you please give a brief non-technical explanation? I know I, I gave you a heads up. I was going to ask you this question, but explain to the agents and whoever is watching this on replay, et cetera, what's cooking. All right. So basically... We just um, had our markets drop. They've never seen anything like this. I, I've never seen anything like this, and I've weathered the storm since 2009. But bottom line is the 0% is for credit cards, folks. That has nothing to do with your actual mortgage, all right? It's based on the 10-year. And so long story short, when you have this much business coming in, all right, secondary markets are capping. And, and, and the reality is, is that when they do that, okay, your rates are going to fluctuate. They're going to go up. They're going to go down. Um, nobody knows where this market's going. And the fear that's impacted in you know, society right now is driving these markets down. Whether you want to blame you know, media, where you want to blame anyone else, the point is, is that um, you know, we are in a market that is going up and down. And if you are locking in loans, you really need to speak to your loan officer and have him or her price out um, the loan, set it all up, uh, and then go into detail about uh, the simplicity of, look, here's your rate. Here's what you're going to be charged for your rate. All right. To answer that question, it's a double-edged sword. I can go on for an hour, two don't. hours, okay, <laughs> and talk about what's really going on in depth. But I don't think we want to go down that road <clears throat> because that's going to, you know, be not a pretty road. So in, in theory, where are rates? Why are they so high? Um, you know, I was locking in 2.6 rates, uh, I'd say almost a week ago. Now I jumped up to five and a quarter. Now I'm down to 3.125. Don't even know what the heck's going to happen today since, you know, it was another, okay, so, but let me, let me interrupt you. Let me guide you into where I want you to go with this. Yeah. Uh, we need, people need to know why it, the feds are at zero and why, you know, or almost zero and, and their deals are not like the refinance buy, and the buyers are not getting that rate. So what's the difference? Are they, why supply are and they, demand, supply and demand, but they're not linked, right? They're not directly linked to each other. No. no. So, so that's it's almost, it's, it's almost like if I have the one roll of toilet paper, okay. And I'm the only person that has toilet paper. Are you going to pay $500 for that one roll? It's right. supply and demand. There's not enough. There's not enough people right now to take on the 79 billion uh, in volume and applications right now. Um, we've never seen anything like this. Everybody is refinancing. Everybody because they're fearful. They're fearful of the unknown, so they want to consolidate. And so that's messing our markets up as well. And you're seeing uh, swings in the market like you've never seen. Never seen. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also heard though, I don't know, uh, Bethany and Megan, if, if you've experienced this, but I've heard because the rates are so low, regardless of, you know, what they're actually showing up, you know, uh, in the, it, when the, when they're being run and locked, but, um, because they're so low and the talk about the rates, um, are you seeing people coming out of the woodworks that used to be interested and kind of died off? I'm hearing that ha that's happening. Like old leads are now like starting to yeah it again and clicking your links again and stuff yeah yes absolutely. they're asking yeah. questions about what they should do but then at the same time they're also scared to do something so that's when you have to educate them and kind of assure them like you know um i think megan sent me a link to a call and they said something really 
good. And then I read it somewhere else that you should be basing these decisions always on your financial situation. And then looking at your financial situation, like if a seller needs to sell, then you list the property, you do it accordingly, you know, but this is not the time to be just throwing something on the market at an overpriced rate and just seeing what's going to happen. And if a buyer needs to buy, you need to get into something, then now is definitely the time to do it if it fits your financial situation. So yeah, they're definitely coming back and looking and asking questions and, and but like wondering what they should do. And I think that's why they see, they go to the professional, like, can you help us? Can you explain what to do right now? Right, 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 right. Cool. Um, all right, guys. So with all this um, kind of shenanigans happening and use online social media, what are you guys doing to keep your head right? <laughs> Megan. Well, I, uh, as Bethany mentioned, we're on a Spartan detox, which nice. I mean, get yourself we're healthy. Day strong. We're three There's days no, now. exactly. We're all, you know, we're always at networking events and hosting events. <laughs> so we're confined to our, you know, homes. So definitely getting healthy, working out, moving around. I make sure to get fresh air when I can. Um, and also reading like Bethany men mentioned, I am so, I'm actually very blessed that we're having this opportunity to reconnect with ourselves. I'm, we have an academy with my brokerage. We're connecting with our Miami association leaders. Uh, we're getting very close in terms of what's happening and the impacts on a hourly, literally hourly basis and just being positive. My family's having their ups, their ebbs and their flows. And I'm just being that voice of reason. What's going to happen is going to happen. We can either go down that rabbit hole of negativity and worry, or we can just, you know, just be very positive and having fun with it. So journaling a lot, um, putting together my um, continuing education. Everyone, it's, I think they've extended it, but March 31st was, was a deadline. So continuing education, um, well, that's organizing, <laughs> organizing Checking my the home things office. off the list. You know, and then tax prep, they extended that, you know, 90 days I yep. saw as well, but tax prep budgets right now, we have to really look at our, our expenses, what we're excess amount that, you know, really dive into uh, where our finances are. So that's something I've really been focusing on as well. I even made some serious cuts. Like fortunately, when I got started a team and got an office, I did everything like on a six month lease six month term, just so you could always reevaluate where you're at. <clears throat> and my lease was up in March. And I remember back in February when this wasn't that serious, I told the lady, I'm like, I'm not really sure I want to renew here. And I was even looking for other office spaces and I found another one that was cheaper. So I was, you know, putting an LOI in. And then for whatever reason, things just had, there was like a two week delay when I didn't make any moves. And in that two weeks is when all this happened. So I just decided I'm going to end my lease there. I'm not going to get anything new. I'm going to set up a home office. There's no need to spend when we're not really sure if the money's going to be coming in like as, as consistent as it was, you know? Yeah. So, you know, though, you know, luckily, you know, some people are prepared for something like this and then others aren't, but you know, we all work on commission. If the, if the, if deals aren't flowing, then, you know, you really have to analyze like and adjust accordingly. So I, I'll I would say, say, go ahead, Mary. Sorry, Megan. Go ahead. No, no, no. I would also say, you know, a lot of people are talking about cutting back on marketing. I would say, no, just be a little bit more smart about your marketing choices, but more than ever, everybody that knows me, I love making newsletters and email blasts. So I'm really taking the time to put useful information. You but just like sent one this morning. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah they're great. Yeah, they're the it. best. So how to work from home. Yeah. So, you know, I'd be very careful. It's also made me reflect on what information I'm putting out there. For sure. Really, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an attorney. You know, really be careful with the messaging that you're sending. So by doing live chats with, you know, other professionals that can talk about it, I'm really leveraging that right now too. So yeah. be careful. <laughs> so, so. A few things you guys just spoke about, I want to, I want to kind of, and Anthony, let me know if you have any comments on it, but with regards to definitely take the time to read, but we've been so busy um, right now. I really haven't a chance, but I'm re-listening to 10 X because it's the perfect time to really just have massive action. So we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot more of these and a lot of other innovative things that um, 
we'll, we'll change things up for how we've been marketing and how we've been reaching out to the community. But um, so that's my 10X comment. But with regards to the, the pipelines right now, I think are still full and there's still things happening. It's making sure we keep filling the pipeline for, for like 60 days from now, right? Um, and that's what's super important. And maybe there'll be a delay, but prep those clients so that once we're back on our feet, we're able to hit the ground running on that. I think that's mm -hmm. the crucial thing. Uh, the reality is I've ha I, in the last seven days through all this, the amount of purchase contracts that we've gotten was, was really a lot. There's a, a huge number of them. And out of all of them, just one person backed out. Out of, let's say, seven purchase contracts in the last few days, only one backed out because of, um, because of the scare, like a scare factor. And people are just moving forward. Um, and with regards to the ones under contract, people are just moving forward. I've only had one person really be like, like one contract where it's really turning into a problem because they would, they were supposed to travel and they got nervous and they don't want other people signing mm -hmm. with them. So, but everybody else is really just like focused on getting it done. And I think everyone, a lot of the agents I speak with, they're just focused on keeping their pipeline full. And I think if you just do that and you reach out with your people and you're, you're, you're acting, um, you know, on top, you're on top of your questions and your leads and your things, and you're reaching out and you're posting and you're doing it, but other people necessarily aren't. And they're just sharing all the coronavirus, like random scary news yeah. uh, and just focusing right now. Now's the time. I think that if we focus on our business and just keep doing it, some people will fall off the wagon because they're scared you know, and they're waiting five hours at Costco to get toilet paper when we're just focusing yeah. on our business and yeah. we're getting the ones that are going to rise and, and be able to continue through this. What do you guys And think? Melinda, on, on that note, I 100% agree with you. I also am taking the approach. I have a seller right now that has the virus. He's been quarantined for three to four weeks. We obviously know what's happening. We've been watching it progress. So it's here. And um, my, my buyer is actually in lockdown in New York. And before all of this happened, I really made sure to talk to my title company and to the lender to say, okay, what is our backup, pl our plan B? You know, are we, should I have a power of attorney in the event that something turns sour? Should I uh, get, get the documents signed ahead of time, order the estoppels early? Like that plan of action has been super reassuring because my, you know, I don't know what's going to happen and we're remaining positive, but that's allowed my seller to focus on just being healthy, you know, right. and right, right. to just keep the, keep the ball going with everything. Anthony, are you seeing a delay in, in appraisals going out yet? Or have you seen any, any trends no. with that just yet? No, nothing like that. In fact, we just had a, a couple fly out to South America because they wanted to be with family. Uh, so we set up a power of attorney because we knew, you know, what to anticipate. But it's just being proactive, you know, like Megan's saying, you know, taking that proactive approach and, and saying, wait, don't do anything. Let's figure this out together and then execute. That's what it's going to take. Um, back to positivity. I'm wearing this suit and I was probably the only idiot in the elevator today wearing a suit. But for me, it's all about not changing what I know I do. I, I, I wear suits. This is what I, what I rock most of the day. So I want to continue that positivity. I want to work out. I don't want to stop my life or stop living. Um, so that stems, you know, big with, you know, setting up what you guys do on your day to day basis. Um, but like you guys are talking about, it's all about really setting the proper expectations. And it goes back to episode two as well, Melinda, setting expectations and understanding that. Yeah, so. for sure. So we talked a bit about the technicalities of the deal. So I like definitely making sure we order stuff early is important. We order everything the day we open a file. So for us, that's, it's, that's not changing our plan of attack with regards to the cities and our title searches. Um, there was an influx of, uh, it's not just me, right? Everyone's been really busy. So our underwriters are having a big influx. So it's taking a little longer. So I'm having to push through with my connections to get uh, title searches back. But at the end of the day, early, early orders is always a good idea, especially right now. So making sure this, cause the cities are backed up if they're short staffed, if they're quarantining themselves and they're not in, um, one of my concerns was, okay, well, what if everyone's ready to close, but are banks going to be closed? Are, you know, I know Anthony- the Courthouses. The courthouse is going to be closed for recording. So uh, there was some, um, I got some information that if you, we can't record, we can't close. 
And, but yeah. another underwriter said, well, if you can't record, no one else can record. So we'll still close. So I sent that periodical to the, to my main underwriter now, and they switched their whole policy today. Wow. That's good. Oh my, really? I'm like, listen, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're gonna lose my business if you can't close, and they I said, can. I need to know I can close my stuff. Yeah. That's not gonna be, you know. So they 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 switch the policy because if I can't record, no one else can. So it, yeah. it's not gonna. Increase Is that like risk. a gap policy? That's a gap. But that's policy that's for... a, that's the problem with the gap, right? right. So exactly. Yeah. So we need our updates to come in. That we can't change. We still have to order an update, but we um but if no one else can record then we you know and we can't record in terms of the priority of what goes in the record. Um, you know, we get, we'll have an affidavit signed by the parties, but it will, it will, uh, will able, be able to close. So that's a huge thing um, that uh, I was felt good about. I'm like, is this update going to have my name on it or something? They're like, it should, but oh, <laughs> Melinda, uh, Melinda's, uh, <laughs> um, but I'm on top of this because I'm trying to make sure that we had the least amount of disruptions as possible through all this. Um, so although right now we're at the office, we do have a backup plan if we do need to work remotely. So the computers and the cell phones are hooked up to our office lines and we're able to do that if, if we need to. And the girls just take their office computer to their house just because it's easier to work with a double screen and being actually on the office computer versus yeah. laptops at home. So that's what like we're doing with that. But with regards to what if something happens, right? Like there was a, I even sent it out myself. There's this random um, force majeure specific about coronavirus, like, addendum that people are, are sending that we're seeing about. circulating for sure right, right? And, and it's basically being part, it's being very specific to um to this scenario mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it doesn't really change what the contract is already providing in the force majeure clause so force majeure it, it really is a, a latin term that says beyond my control and uh and basically think of like a hurricane is a perfect example but in this scenario if there's no business running there's no banks there's you know open or business is not able to run or lender your lender's office is closed down because they got sick or is my or whatever or myself or a party in the transaction how does that impact i think that that is already a force majeure um built into that and Yes, we could add extra clauses, but I think that might just worry people if we put that in uh, and, and, and keep adding fuel to the fire of the uncertainty. Um, but what that means is basically if we can't close now because of something out of our control caused by this virus, then um, we will postpone it until, but then there's also an end date, right? Like you can't be stuck in this contract forever indefinitely. So there's a 30 day window on that. What does that mean no, regarding, what? are they allowed to back out? Like how does the force majeure, cause I've had a lot of clients ask me about it and it's right. like circling in a lot of our group chats. So no, does, you can't just say can all just... force, like I, I, this is actually happening in one of the deals. I remember I mentioned someone's backing out and actually Bethany, um, this is um, one of the deals that, we're, uh, that one of your team members is on. And basically, um, yeah. So I don't know if you heard about it yet, but, no. it late last night, but basically no. um, the buyer is like, yeah, I'm going to elect my force majeure. This is definitely going to take more than 30 days. And that's, and so I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't want to close anymore. And I want my deposit back. And it's not that simple, right? You actually have to do your full due diligence and try to close. And then if, it, if you can't do it, then you have, a, yeah, you have to, you have to do, to do. And it. as of right now, anything can close still. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's the problem. Not... That's so the what, problem. What is the end date, Melinda? That's the, that's the biggest question. And I mean, the what end if the lender has taken, what if the lender ha needs to take more? What if, what if the consumer went to a big box bank? All right. Let's not name any banks here, but let's just say now they're at a 60 day closing or 120 day closing because well that's the, there is a built-in default so let's say let's say um we were supposed to close this friday but on friday banks are shut down which is not going to happen but let's just say it for the for the example then we have through this clause 30 days to for them to reopen and try to close Got at it. that point either party can they can stay and wait or they can elect to uh contract because of that 
So that's where that there's an election. It's not a guaranteed cancellation. It's an election and you have to wait the 30 days and you can't just change your mind just to change your mind. Okay. okay and then use that. If you have all, if you, if everybody can close, the transaction can still close. Listen, the, the loans approved and everything's done. Like the, the loans last step approved. is just signing. So what, what, like what examples of what's being delayed that they can try to say they want to back out? What is it? Uh, right now, nothing. So there is no, so technically there is no reason you can't use force majeure. Right now. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Unless you're in quarantine. And yeah. Can't. That's kind of what like, we, like we you're just sick. spoke about. That. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're sick, like your seller. Or a that, party is sick. Yeah. <laughs> or a, like your seller that that's not feeling well right now they're in quarantine. So if they haven't already signed, they're going to have to wait till they're out of quarantine to sign. Yeah. We can't get a notary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thing. Right. So that's, that's, that makes sense. But in this yeah. scenario, if everyone's healthy, there's no really way out of it. So another question I got that I want to bring up, which ties into this about getting a notary is uh, digital closings. So everyone, there was a lot of talk about it in January, the remote online notarization. Um, but what does that really mean for all this? Um, sellers can sign remotely, not a problem. If your seller was an American citizen, I know they're in, you told me they were in France. If they were American, we would be able to assign them remotely and through a Zoom chat, something similar to this, and we'd be able to close them. Unfortunately, if they don't have a social, the, the technology is not there yet to be able to do that. If they do, that's an option if no one thought of it yet. Um, so that's for, that's for digital closings. For the buyers, we can't do that yet because lenders are not fully optimized for a full digital closing. They do have some hybrids out there. And there are some random lenders I hear that are accepting it, but in Florida, I haven't seen one yet that will accept a full digital. That means a digital mortgage, digital note, digital affidavits. The hybrids still require those wet signs. So that's not really an option yet at this point um, because unless the lender allows for it. If the lender allows for it, then we're good. So um, Megan, you had mentioned to me when we were chatting uh, about what you're doing with regards to your virtual open houses. And Bethany, you were talking about this too, doing the pre-showings. Why don't you guys tell us how you're still moving things forward, um, by, but still keeping yourself safe and, and healthy. We, yeah, we had, um, we actually had our morning call uh, with Ben Sorensen, the city commissioner here in Broward, which was really, really informative. And he's really advising to not do actual open houses. I mean, every county is trickling down their restrictions and buildings, like Bethany said, in Miami specifically. So right now, while we have access to the buildings and the properties, we've been doing virtual open houses or showings for prospective buyers because they're still looking more than ever. Um, and still, many of them have to relocate. Uh, so we've also today had a virtual inspection of a property, which was great. The buyer was able to be there. Um, the inspector was on site and, you know, we'll get all the paperwork within a few hours. So we're working around as best as we can and minimizing how many people are coming in contact. And then as you mentioned, gloves, masks, extra precautions. Um, and yeah, Bethany, I know you also had um, some showings lately yeah, virtually. Uh, I have, I've always done virtual showings uh, through BombBomb or FaceTime when my clients are relocating. But this time I had a client that just want, really wanted to see the property, but didn't want to leave or couldn't get there. So I said, don't worry. I can tour it for you. I can take pictures. I know what you're looking for. I'll send you a video and we'll do FaceTime. I mean, with that being said, like that's pretty much how we're trying to do so many things. Like even today, it's like, how do you still be social, still keep things going and then take it virtual and, um, you know, between webinars and, and online events, right? So Megan's going to be doing a virtual tour of the NSU Art Museum. Um, they're closed to the public, but they're going to allow her, I believe she's on the today. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. And That's then cool. I'm going to go and I'm going to live it for the Miami YPN social media page. That way we can still have activity going on and engagement, you know? Yeah. You don't want to just die off because you are at home or not able to do certain things. So if you get creative and do things like that, you can still give knowledge to your network, have exciting things going on. So 
we're excited did you, about that. Did you guys hear how there's some celebrities doing, um, or like musicians doing some live concerts, like through the I mean, that's I awesome. I, heard that. I, I mean, just the fact that we're coming together and getting so creative and we're not letting this get us down, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. And I have to say, Bethany and I have been, pre I mean, we use technology all the time. We've been so, uh, you know, on social media. So this is exciting for us because we've had so many ideas and oh now we're like, God. all right, let's crank it out. And then, you <laughs> yeah. know, I don't know about you guys, which I think we're all the same in this box. Um, I hate, I don't, I feel like there is no day off, you know, like I feel like I'm always working. I'm always on, I would never be home on a Wednesday at 1146 like <laughs> there's no I would be out I just have to be out yeah. so the fact that you're you're kind of forced to take this break and 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 be home and have this intentional time but and I'm just like is this for real like I can do this you know so it's kind of exciting in a way even though we should be very very thankful that we are healthy because yeah. you know, for the people that are forced to be home and they're on quarantine and they're sick, I mean, it's not, it's not fun, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also very aware of that. But I'm doing like Zoom meetings with my clients when they want to. Like someone said they wanted to come in on Monday. I'm like, listen, let's just do Zoom because I need to close your deal after this. So let's make sure we're minimizing everybody coming in and out so that you know. Uh, but it's definitely the, the way we communicate. I mean, I've been doing this anyways, but now it's like on a whole other level. I know Anthony always did videos, emails to his clients, and now it's just being more commonplace. So we were ahead of the curve, all of us. Um, so let's talk about the marketing angle of all this. We're going to be doing a, a Mar March Marketing Madness for everybody watching on March 31st. So stay tuned for that info. And everyone on this call, plus a few others, will be joining us. Um, and we're going to have different segments of just about marketing in real estate. But, uh, but I think if, even if you're not in real estate, I think you'll, you'll learn some amazing things. Uh, and I want to kind of ask you guys, like, so one thing that I'm trying to do, we spoke about this the other day, like I want to make my 15 calls a day, just checking in on people. So with my sphere, um, just calling and saying, hi, how are you doing? Like, what's cooking? What have you been up to? Are you busy? Are you working? Are you home? You know, how's the family? And I'm doing those calls as much as I can um, through all this busy, busy season that I'm in. But um, that's what I've been doing and trying to, you know, and for me, when I get really busy, I sometimes forget to post or do things. Um, it's, you, you could tell like what's happening in my life. If you know, if I'm really busy at the office, because I, I can't stop like just for a minute, but, uh, but I'm trying to still like be on there and do all these things that we're doing now. What are you guys doing to, Fill your pipeline, check in with your people. How are you doing it? When are you doing it? Um, well, we were on a challenge to call of our clients. We said yeah. we were going to call 10, what did we say? 10 people 15. a day, 50 people 15. a day. 15 <laughs> people a day. Um, and just go down the list and check in with everybody and see where they're at. Again, some people don't know what's, I, it's hard to believe that some aren't as updated. So that, I'm um, organizing my database. I'm, I'm using some of these programs that I've been holding off on putting together. I'm doing that. So, um, and then I'm using that so that I can have constant contact with my clients through email, through bomb bomb videos, whatever, whatever I need to do, social media, you name it. Now, what about you, Anthony? We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. So basically, um, we broke down segments and the lists that I've closed, the clients that I've closed in 2016, 17, 18, 19, uh, all the way up to you know this year, we've sent them information and content uh, about interest rates uh, and just to engage with them. So Travis over here, he's making those types of calls, but one person can't make you know three, four, five hundred phone calls in one shot. So what he's doing is he's target marketing um, the refis right now and engaging with those uh, consumers via text, video, uh, and through email. And so when he sees the analytics of what's happening, um, he's then calling that individual uh, who's going to be interested. For example, someone pulling their credit right now yesterday was a past client and obviously she's refinancing. So I'm calling that person uh, and introducing myself and then bringing it back to that real estate agent if it's not a refinance or if it's possibly selling their home or whatnot. Uh, but we broke it into segments because one person can't do 
the amount of business that we're trying to do. How do you take it from a macro level? How do you 10 X it? Right? So systems are allowing us to do that. Um, and it's extremely important that, you know, in these times you're taking your database, which is your customer relation management system and organize in that database. We broke it down into buyers, into real estate agents, into listing agents. So then you can physically target market those people uh, with certain content. So it's, it's interesting. It's nothing like we've ever done before, but um, it's massive action. Like Megan was saying, you don't want to stop marketing. You want to, this is the time to market the hardest and uh, yes. to stay on top of everything. But market for short term results. Don't right now is not the time to do that long game marketing plan where like, <laughs> Oh yeah, let's build this type of referral. You gotta have that in place, like, so. man. Long term, right, right. don't spend money on long term. We're talking short term. We have to be focused, yes, focused on building your pipeline within the next few. You know, so what, what I would do, that's it. Let me, let me elaborate on that. So what I would do, if I'm a real estate agent, lender, anybody in the business, I would just simply export an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. <laughs> and then I would physically uh, take the emails and uh, not necessarily do a blast email, but maybe, you know, take 10, 10 people on that, uh, on that list and try to engage with them. The concept is to engage. If they're engaging, they're interested in something, uh, not just opening up the email. So don't do it on a macro level. Just try to take it step by step. Maybe every day, email 15 people a day who you think is good, you know, is ready to refinance or possibly purchase a home, something like that. Cool. Yeah, and I think the messaging too, short term is important because the, the messaging right now, it's changing so quick. I mean, from day, day to, to day. day. So if you're trying to send out a mailer, with some information on the market update, I would advise maybe keep it digital and just, you know, not go that route. Yeah. Um, I think as people are, <laughs> and you know, a funny story too, my mailman, Ronnie, who I love, you know, thank you, Ronnie. He, I asked him the other day, I'm like, Hey, are, how's business affected for you? And he said, it's never been so busy. Really? Uh, and he is just out there and people are outside waiting for their mail. So I mean, still do mailers, just be careful on what messaging you're providing, but I'm going to be hitting out my farm, my geographical farm, the buildings that I have listings in, um, just about some programs we have. So I think, you know, just think about what you're delivering value. and be sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. I love that. Listen, in all this, there's always opportunity, right? So there's, uh, in a sensitive way, there's always people moving in real estate. Right. And so mm -hmm. we just need to be the ones that are getting more of that market share. That's plain and simple, you know, for, for all of us here on the call. If you're on the call, you're probably someone who takes your business very seriously, um, trying to grow it. Um, if, you know, uh, I'm sure obviously the four of us are all, are all like that, trying to always learn something, find out what's going on, trying to make ourselves better, reading a book. Um, let, we should all share what books we're reading, you know, and the tips we have. And you can actually share uh, an audio book to another friend, which is pretty cool without having to, to that. charge for that. Um, know that. But there's opportunity. Listen, I had a deal. It wasn't my, in December, we tried to get under contract for this commercial, two commercial properties. The offer wasn't accepted because they accepted something else um, right before our offer got, got sent. So they called us. We passed due diligence. We checked in. Are they still moving forward? Yes. Okay. That was in January. Now, right before closing, buyers are backing out. They're going to lose a deposit, but they're backing out. And that's their prerogative. But that listing agent hit us up and now our offer went in $100,000 less. Um, wow. And Same we're thing happened. That. So oh, there's, okay. there's opportunity there, you know, and this is a cash buyer. So there's opportunities out there. So I would say everyone needs to also like be positive when being asked about this, like try to stay positive. How, you know, I, I've been trying to stay positive by not looking at the, at the news too much and trying not to, like when someone tells me something, I'm like, what's your source? <laughs> right, yeah. Like I, like I, that's like, all, there's so much fake news out there right now. Um, um, we have to be very careful we're not sharing that fake news. That's actually yeah. very important. There was a, a forum going around about um, stopping rent and mortgage payments for the time mm -hmm. being. What do you guys think about that? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I said the petition someone, that you said the the petition petition. that I was just like, someone said this to me. What do you think about this? 
And then I sent it to a landlord, someone who owns multiple properties and they're a landlord. They're like, though that sounds enticing, I would never sign that. I'm a landlord. I have about uh, 25 tenants. I am not trying to have them stop. He was also in the middle of a refinance. So I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, this is America. That's not the way we usually do things mm -hmm. nowadays, uh, you know, yeah. or ever. Um, I know China had implemented some of those types of things, but that's a totally different governmental system. Like, different, yeah. 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 So we can't be doing that kind of stuff. That's not, uh, we're we're based on, listen, yes, certain companies are get, certain industries are getting hit right now. Real estate, I think is still keeping up, I think because of the rates and all the talk on the rates. And, and I think, um, I think that the serious agents are like making sure to keep working, which I, that's what I've been mm -hmm. seeing. Uh, but then after also Amazon just hired a thousand people. So there, you just got to shift your, like your thing. There's always opportunity and you just got to put yourself where the opportunity is. So maybe how you're going to be marketing yourself, maybe, you know how they always say list to last. And, and yes, listings are important yeah. for a real estate agent, but having a qualified buyer when times are tough, is actually probably a stronger paycheck <laughs> than a listing because there might probably going to be a lot of listings out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's my opinion on those types of things, but um, I don't know. I'm looking at our list of things that we wanted to talk about. We definitely hit a bunch. Does anyone listening have questions or comments that you want to chime in on? While Dana's we're... recommended a book. But no. she said YouTube has quite a few books you can listen to for free. So that's a great, that's a great idea. That's great. And there's so many free classes online to be able to, to hit up and, and, uh, and use. Um, I've got a, I'm reading. a little bit off topic <laughs> that I, I wanted to just touch base on. So what I experienced today was in our median, there is funds coming from a 401k. So if I am a real estate agent, not necessarily even a lender, I'm going to ask my client, Hey, let's see proof great. of funds. Uh, because we all know the market's going down. And if those are the funds they're going to liquidate in order to close on their home, you know, mm -hmm. talk to their financial consultant before doing so and make sure that those funds are, you know, obviously liquidated sooner than later. But we're having some troubles there. So the way we're addressing it, like Melinda says, expectations up front. So... Anthony, I have, I, I want to ask you, so I have um, a deal that's under contract right now where they're in the, they're in the restaurant business. Um, the lender's trying to push them up to close sooner. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to no, let's wait and see what happens and push it back to get the deal done. I would think the sooner, the better, right? Sooner, the better. Yeah. Restaurant business, they're probably going to be self-employed obviously. So, you know, from income standpoint, you're fine there, but what's going to happen with, you know, paychecks, you know, W2, what's going to happen yeah. there? You know, how, how, is the income going to even make sense? Is the underwriter discretion? There's so many, I've seen so many articles that are, you know, um, basically constantly going through and, and we're reading those articles and I don't know. Yeah. Sooner the better. I, I, I wouldn't create the sense of urgency, but be honest with them. Don't, don't just, you know, say, Hey, you got to buy now. Cause I, I feel like, Yesterday, I felt like I was a used car salesman selling snake oil to these people because the market's changing and 10 minutes later, the, high, the rate's right. higher. And they're just like, what's going on? I'm like, look. Yeah. So, you know, sooner the better, obviously. That's, you know. If they want to close. Yeah, of course. Of course. Cool. Bethany, what are you reading right now? I'm reading The Alter Ego, which is something that I started before prior to, <laughs> so to am I. <laughs> yeah and then i'm reading actually i just downloaded this other book that someone told me about the other day that i'm really excited for let me open up my library um the four disciplines of execution oh yeah so uh, someone told me about that one and i'm really excited to that about that one because i feel like just getting things executing my plan for this for this time being Mm -hmm. is um is what i need to do i need to focus and just get things done and not get distracted by all the craziness right yeah um, and i think it be, being better bettering ourselves we're bettering ourselves for our clients like we're making sure that when this time passes we're stronger more knowledgeable and we're able to help our clients get through these times yeah for sure a few of the books that i just i finished reading earlier this month or the, earlier this year was the obstacle is the way what a good book that was um, the Go-Giver, which is an old one, but a really good one. 
And uh, so I really like that one. And then um, there's a couple of other ones, but it's not worth mentioning. The Four Agreements is one that I try to reread every so often, um, which I think is a good one. And so if you want, if you have that, reading that one would be, is a good one if you haven't yet. Let's see, what's so, his ego cool. enemy, Ryan Holiday? What? Oh, everybody's book. making some great book recommendations. Yes, right uh, I'm going to be writing all those down. I've been re I've been reading my business plan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know I we I've taught business plan many yeah, yeah. times. It, this is a great time to work on your business plan. I actually just worked okay. on mine yesterday. Like, that's awesome. You know, that's and awesome. It's, it shows you what you need to focus on more. So I'm like, okay, let's get this get this thing going. Work and we have to adjust it. What I thought I was going to be focusing on, you know, even a month ago is very different now. So yes, for sure. Yes. I love that. I love that. I'm always, I'm always happy when I hear people talking about working on their business plan. Um, I probably have to adjust mine because like it's been a busy month and it's not what I anticipated so quickly in the year. Um, and especially not with all this stuff happening. So I need to like sit down the funny thing is, I, I, I was talking to Anthony about this. Okay, Anthony, we said it. We got to keep our expenses low. No more hiring. Like, we just got to, like, mm -hmm. status quo this, cut any non-productive expenses. I'm telling and, you, and, I've gone through everything, and I'm like, what do I not need? What subscription do I not need? I mean, just getting rid of my office altogether was a large expense. That's going to prepare me for whatever happens right. in the next couple of months. But then and, you have to see what your yeah, business needs. Like, me, I yeah, hired, I did have to hire somebody she's virtual but and she started on monday because the amount of work we have like it was not sustainable with the size of our team how crazy is it the virtual uh, virtual assistants are something that we all need anyways this they're such yes. added value so for whoever was contemplating one and just held yes. back for whatever reason then now's the time to explore that option yeah for sure yeah i definitely um we just, it was just too much and we needed to partition some of the work just so that things can keep flowing properly and at the level of service that I wanted to provide because, you know, I have my standards for myself and my team. So we need to get stuff done properly and not like, I don't like to, things to slack and get delayed. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's kind of, that's, that's it. We were scheduled for one hour. We are wrapping up on that hour. Um, and I'm super happy that you guys joined us. We have a lot of good things cooking. So if you RSVP with this link, you'll get information about all the stuff that we're gonna have coming up soon. Um, and this way we'll be able to share that with all of you guys. And we Any encourage last? all of you to do the same. Yeah. Yeah, stay positive. Stay positive. Um, I, yeah, for sure. Uh, I have a very good friend of mine. She's a psychotherapist. I'm going to have her actually come on one of our next uh, shows because she's so awesome and she really is can like calm everybody down. So um, yeah. And on I'm I, my, my car has Sirius XM just rolling all the time. And the last five days have been about dealing with anxiety and depression and how to cope with coronavirus. <laughs> Meaning like, uh, it's yeah. just ridiculous how <laughs> oh I'm like, Really, people. No, it's, there's more yeah, it's frantic serious. people that are so paranoid and so like anxiety stricken by what's happening that they're that's like a whole thing itself. Right. And that even a girl, a client of mine, who's one of my sellers, says that she's gonna. She's so scared about what's happening in New York because she's in New York that she wants to come down and move into her empty two bedroom apartment. I said making that move with a new baby is really not going to help you if you think that the grocery stores are any like nicer here. I go, what if you move and in this move, you have to buy furniture, you have to do all these things. And then what if it gets worse? Like here, we don't even know. Just hang tight. You're healthy. You're happy. Everything is good. Yeah. And um, don't make any ra like but this is decisions right. running from it, you know? But this is why there's opportunity, guys. Yeah. Because people's oh, yeah. heads are not in the game. So if yeah. we all say nothing else you get from today is staying focused in your in the game keep your head in the game keep doing what you know you need to do to be successful and do it harder yeah and I, <laughs> and I would say i would say get up this morning i got up i was like i'm going to the office today you know i got dressed yeah. you know morning routine just spread good news to to people around you 
Yeah. And, awesome. and I think for people who are a little apprehensive of video, a lot of my friends are writing me. They're really feeling lonely. They're really feeling disconnected. This was great. I, yeah. you know, I was energized yeah. from this. So thank yes. you guys. Awesome. Thanks for and joining us. And I feel like we can continue to do more of this. Yes, we, all, sure. we all have calls thank lined you. up with service providers and realtors in other markets. I'm so interested to see what other realtors are doing in other markets. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Should we say call, our, our social media handles? Yes. For people yes. Ty, 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 type it. Type Leave your stuff in the chat media. so they can follow you guys if they don't already follow you. What we're going to do since it didn't go live, unfortunately, is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll upload it and it, I'll tag everyone and we'll be live, but it's just not going to be Perfect. too much. So it's pre recorded. So, but next time we'll, uh, we'll have everything. We'll have to work out that kink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's All cool. right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Guys, Thank talk you. to you soon. All right, bye. 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 bye.